So Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances and welcome to the World Holy Name Festival. Come on, everyone, go on the chat box. His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. I want to see Jai on the comment box. May we also request all the participants to please turn on their cameras. It be a mark of respect to our esteemed speaker, His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj. Thank you very much. Yes. His Grace Govinda Charan Prabhuji, I think uh, Maharaj is unable to unmute himself. Okay, we can just check if the co host has been. You are, uh, aren't you there? Aren't you there, Rupeshwar Prabhu? Isn't there someone close by who could check? Yes, yes, there is two devotees, Krishna Kirtan Prabhuji is there, and okay. His Grace. Uh, um, no, I think. Hare Krishna. Pananda Prabhuji is also there. Can you check and write me? Haribom. Jai. Yala Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Manchikalpa Thiru Bhishya Pipa Sindhu Veva Chapatita Ram Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Ramahona Maha. Manchikalpa Thiru Bhishya Pipa Sindhu Veva Chapatita Ram Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Ramahona Maha. Yan Timiranda Syagina Jana Salakaya Chaksu and Malitam Yena Tasma Shri Gurvena Maha Mount Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pachari Ne Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarani Vansha Kalpa Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktavindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare and My humble obeisances to all the Vaishnavas online and so we are discussing the most important of all activities within the process of pure devotion service the glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, which is the essence of the practice of bhakti in the form of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. There's a beautiful verse that really sums up the position of the Holy Name from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. This is Adi Lila, chapter 7, verse number 74. I'll read the uh, Bengali and I'll also read the translation. Namavino Kalikale Nahaya Dharm Sarva Mantra Saranama Esastra Marm. Translation In this age of Kali, there is no religious principle other than the chanting of the holy name, which is the essence of all Vedic hymns. This is the purport of all scriptures. So now we go to Srila Prabhupada's purport, which is quite informative. The principles of the Parampara system were strictly honored in Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, and Dwapyara Yuga. But in the present age, Kali Yuga, people neglect the importance of this system of Shrauta Parampara or receiving knowledge by Zixiblik succession. In this age, people are prepared to argue that they cannot understand, they can understand that which is beyond the limited knowledge and perception through so-called scientific observations and experiments, not knowing that actual truth comes down to human society from authorities. This argumentative, argumentative attitude is against the Vedic principles. It is very difficult for one who adopts it to understand that the holy name of of Krishna is as good as Krishna himself. Since Krishna and his holy name are identical, 
The holy name is eternally pure and beyond material contamination. It is the supreme personality of God as a transcendental vibration. The holy name is completely different from material sound as confirmed by Naratam Das Thakur. Golokira Premadan Harinam Sankirtan. The transcendental vibration of the Harinam Sankirtan is imported from the spiritual world. Thus, although materialists who are addicted to experimental knowledge and so-called scientific method cannot place their faith in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it is a fact that simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra offenselessly, one can be freed from all subtle and gross conclusions. The spiritual world is called Vaikuntha, which means without anxiety. In the material world, everything is full of anxiety, where in the spiritual world, Vaikuntha, everything is free from anxiety. Those, therefore, those who are afflicted by a combination of anxieties cannot understand the Hare Krishna mantra, which is free from all anxiety. In the present age, the vibration of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the only process that is in a transcendental position beyond material contamination. Since the holy name can deliver a conditioned soul that is explained here to be Sarva Mantra Sara, the essence of all Vedic hymns. And the purport goes on, but I'll stop right here. So, um, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, as is mentioned here also, has to be free from the offenses. Therefore, is Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Most of the time, not always, but many times, when he was giving initiation, he would always have the 10 offenses to the chanting recited as a way to help us become aware of the fact that there are very important activities that must be avoided in order for, to get the benefit of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The chanting of the Maha Mantra goes through different stages of development. When the devotee begins the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, generally they are still chanting Nama Bharat. And as they practice, and become aware of those offenses and avoid those offenses, they start gradually coming to the stage of Namabas. Namabas is a glimmer of the actual power of the holy name. It's used to compare in the sense that just like when the early morning hours are there and people are waking up, the sun is also coming up from below the horizon. At a certain point, the uh, atmosphere becomes light and birds start to chirp and uh, the one can start seeing the different forms in the atmosphere, but one still cannot see the sun. So this, this, this stage of uh, awareness of the sun coming up, but not yet visible, although there is light present, is like the Namabas stage, where there is a glimmer of the power of the holy name that is being accessed through the process of chanting. And if, as one continues to chant and avoid the offenses and engage in devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual master, one can raise himself to the position of um, Sudanam, or pure chanting, which is actually the goal of chanting. In the six Shastika prayers, it is explained in the second verse, Nam Nam Akari Bahudani Jasar Vrishakti Tatar Pitani Amita Smarane Nakalaha Eta Dishri Tava Kripa Bhagavan Mamapi Dur Daiva Midri Sami Hajani Nanduragaha Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is Krishna himself, who came to practice the chanting of the holy name as his own transcendental pleasure and at the same time to teach the process of the holy name, speaks these eight verses, which are known as Shikshastakam. The second verse of what we just quoted is that there are no hard and fast rules for chanting the holy name. 
But that doesn't indicate or, or eliminate the fact that one has to chant in such a way as they avoid the offenses. In the Mahabharata, which is a verse in the Mahabharata, which is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in Madhya Lila chapter 22, verse 113, it mentions that that there are the essence of bhakti is two to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and to ultimately always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna, which is really centered around glorification of the Lord through the form of chanting Krishna's holy name. In that verse from Shikshastaka, it mentions that there are many names of the Lord. Uh, in the verse, it mentions Krishna, Govinda, and then it indicates there are other names. Now, the, the Acharyas say that there are two types or categories of names that are connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One is his primary names, and one is his secondary names. The secondary names are not to be chanted, but they are, they are in relationship to the power of the Supreme Lord by which he facilitates his activities in the material world. Names such as um, Param Brahma or Ishwara or even the word God, it indicates his functions, but not actually him itself. Still, it's a name of, that is indicated of the absolute truth. The primary names must be chanted as the means for glorification of the Supreme Lord. And in that verse, it ends, it says, Durdaivam Idrisami Hajani. The word Durdaivam has two different translations. One is, I am unfortunate. Why? Because I have no taste for chanting. And so getting a taste for chanting is a concomitant or based on avoiding the offenses. Therefore, another translation for the word of Dadar Daivam is the reason why I'm unfortunate is because I commit offenses. And therefore, these 10 offenses, and along with the 11th offense, which is the offense that must be followed in order to avoid the 10 offenses, uh, uh, which is attentive chanting, must be understood and avoided by the, the practitioners. The first offense of the holy name is to blaspheme devotees who have dedicated their lives to the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And that means that one is, uh, there are a class of Vaishnavas who surrender their whole life to spread the glories of the holy name. If one finds fault what these persons or criticizes them, that is considered um, what is called hasti aparad, which means that one has committed an offense that is compared to an elephant that tramples into one's garden and destroys everything in it. We understand that, you know, if you put your, an elephant into the garden, you can forget about your garden. There's nothing left. <laughs> so this is considered hasti. Hasti refers to elephant. Uh, must be avoided in order to uh, progress in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. To consider any other demigods like Shiva or Brahma or, uh, you know, Narada, any powerful demigods to their names to be equal or even uh, greater than the name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna Vishnu is considered an offense also. Um, the third offense is to disobey to the orders of the spiritual master. And sometimes they say to consider the spiritual master to be an ordinary person, to minimize his instructions and in saying these are important and these are not important. This is a way to minimize the importance of the instructions. And this is also will impede one's progress in the process of chanting. The fourth offense is to blaspheme Vedic literatures or literatures in pursuance of the Vedic version. Prabhupada makes that common relationship to other religious traditions who have their own scriptures. They may not have pure religious scriptures, 
but still they have a, they have religious scriptures for a certain class of men. They should be seen in that way. And if people vilify them or criticize them, saying they, they are, you know, not up to the standard, that is also an offense. Or statements that support the chanting of the holy name coming from various uh, Puranas also, if one finds fault with that or minimizes that or disregards that, that is also considered offense. The next offense is to consider the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra as imagination. The glories of the holy name are spoken throughout the scriptures. And therefore, even it's, it's understood that the glories of the holy name actually are an understatement for the actual glories of the holy name. One cannot glorify the holy name because the holy name of Krishna is non-different than Krishna himself. And so, um, to think that these are hyperboles, eulogies, exaggerations, are, are, and that is another form of offense. The next offense is to interpret the holy name by comparing it to something material in this world. For instance, well, you know, chanting the holy name is like eating a nice feast, <laughs> or chanting the holy name is... Um, it's like a refreshing bath <laughs> or compare it to anything that appears to be materially inside in the mode of goodness in the material world. And that is another form of offense. The holy name is completely transcendental to everything material. And to describe the holy name, we have to take the glories of the holy name's descriptions that come from the Acharyas and from the Lord himself and not to create our own ideas of what the glories of the holy name are because as is mentioned in kali kale nama rupa krishna avatar actually that's not the verse the verse is nama chintamani krishna chaitanya rasa vigraha purnya surya nit mukta abhinna twa nami nami no in that last line abhinna bina means different and abhinna means non-different the holy name of the Lord is non-different than the Supreme Personality of God in, in all respects. And that's also mentioned in that verse, Nija Sarva Shaktish, that verse we just quoted, the second verse from Shikshastika. Because in that verse, it says that all of the power, energies, forms, names, qualities, pastimes, all aspects of the absolute truth are contained within the within the holy name of Krishna. In other words, the holy name of Krishna is identical with Krishna in all respects. It is actually Krishna himself in the form of transcendental sound. <laughs> it's just another manifestation of the absolute truth, and therefore non-different from the absolute truth. Um, the seventh offense is... Uh, Nam Nam Yasya Bali Papa Bhuti, which means that, okay, I hear that, you know, by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, I can get freed from the reactions of my sinful activities. And uh, therefore, I am going to perform some activities that are in the category of sense gratification, maybe a little intoxication here and there once in a while. And then I'll come back home that, that night and I'll chant and I'll get free from my, the reactions of acting in that way. Uh, that is a very grievous offense. It's considered the worst of all offenses. The Prabhupada at one time was questioned by one, by the devotees back in the early days when, of 1974. There was one personality who joined the movement and he was a, he was a, actually a very, uh, prominent personality who came along with many of his followers and they joined the Hare Krishna movement. But after some time, he was smoking marijuana and chanting Hare Krishna and saying that this enhances your, you know, your experience of chanting Hare Krishna. And he was trying to introduce that. And then the word got back to Prabhupada and Prabhupada said his chanting is useless because 
you cannot commit sinful activities or break the principles and at the same time expect the holy name will deliver you from the reactions. You know, this is this is if somehow or other, if one um, accidentally commits some uh, sinful activity or some fence, then um, one can chant the holy names and gradually purify themselves from that reaction. But that is done accidentally, not purposeful. Purpose, this verse number seven is, is if one is actually planning to commit sinful activities and expect the holy name to relieve them of that. The eighth offense, and sometimes we find that people may, uh, commit this offense very easy. Um, well, I'm doing my puja, I'm doing my homa, I got my vrata, I'm chanting my mantras. So, and chanting Hare Krishna is just one of the many activities that are mentioned in the Vedas. So, they're all okay. Get the mata tatapata. I'm okay, you're okay. As long as I'm doing some form of worship, then that is that is considered to be acceptable. But that uh, that minimizes or actually doesn't have a clear understanding of it. The actual position of the holy name, it's above karma kanda, it's above jnana kanda, it's above all kinds of activities in the Vedas that are mentioned in order for elevation to a higher stage. But chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is Goloketa Premadana Harinam Sankirtan. It's coming directly from the spiritual world into the hearts of the pure devotees of the Lord who have achieved perfection in bhakti. And then they distribute that chanting to all of us in this, uh, in this on this material realm here. So that eighth offense is, you know, one should be very careful not to compare it or to equalize it with any other spiritual activity. The ninth offense is to instruct the faithless persons about the glories of the holy name. Um, in other words, if you are speaking to someone and trying to explain the importance of chanting, you keep it simple. You say by chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you know, you can connect with God through de in devotion. You can, um, you can free yourself from various sufferings and anxieties. But if you start to glorify the higher principles that the holy name will offer, such as the pastimes of Krishna and Vrindavan, to such persons who have no understanding, and then that is considered to be offense. And if people are averse to hearing your glorification or your instructions on the holy name, one should not try to force it. Because it's, it says that in the Christian scriptures, they also have a similar statement. It says, do not throw pearls valuable pearls before a pig. Because if you give pay, uh, pearls to a pig, you know, he'll just simply chew on it or step on it. He doesn't know the value of it. So in the same way that uh, we keep it simple, but sometimes we find that when we give a class or a lecture and we're speaking about the chanting of the glories of the Holy Name, there are people there who are doubtful, who are critical, who may not be qualified to hear, but sometimes that, that we take that chance because there is a large gathering of people and we speak, but still we should be very careful not to get into the esoteric aspect of the glories of the Holy Name. And the last, and number 10, and this is the, the I and mind concept. I've been chanting for so many years I've read books about it. I've heard from my spiritual teachers about the glories of the holy name, but still I'm attached to sense gratification in this material world. Uh, even though I've heard, I also understand to some degree, I still am attached to trying to enjoy in this material world. In other words, 
I am full of material desires and I'm still trying to fulfill them. It's called the eye and mind concept, you know, Janasama Om Yam Maham Mameti. Um, and it is the principle that keeps one on the bodily concept. Now, the uh, 11th offense is interesting. It's in addition to the 10. And Srila Bhakti Vinoda explains that by carefully avoiding the 11th offense, one will lose the tendency or will not, not have the tendency to commit the other 10 offenses. So one should very carefully and Srila Bhakti Vinoda explains, here is where you should apply your attention. Huh? Here's where you should look for advancement. To perfect the quality of your chanting by chanting attentively, regularly, and with as much devo devotion as you can acquiesce. In other words, this attentive chanting is, uh, this chanting is, is a meditation. It's called mantra meditation. And so to come to the stage of meditation, one has to continually sound the names of the Lord and hear very carefully. Srila Prabhupada didn't give many uh, instructions about the activities of chanting other than glorifying the holy name, but it, he did say one should chant and hear. When one devotee had asked him a question, um, Srila Prabhupada, when I chant, I can't control my mind. Prabhupada said, forget about the mind, just hear the sound. <laughs> That's all. In other words, the mind will chatter in the background and come up with all kinds of uh, things for you to get your attention. Just ignore that and keep keep your my keep your attention focused on the sound of the holy name. Chant clearly. This is important when we chant because clear chanting helps to bring about attention. If our chanting is not clear, it will be hard to bring about attention. So therefore, we should sound it very clearly. And Srila Prabhupada also has demonstrated that. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Um, one of the things we should not, we should avoid when we're chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, when we're doing our prescribed rounds, do not try to um, beat the clock. Try to hurry your rounds up. So you can finish it. We have so many things to do in life. We have other responsibilities. We're doing, we're squeezing our rounds in sometimes in the morning or in throughout the day. But whatever time you decide to chant, of course, the best time for chanting is in the Brahma Mohorta hour, the early morning hours. But of course, sometimes we're not able to because of a particular lifestyle or particular schedule that was required. But one should not try to, uh, as we say, uh, beat the clock and not try to squeeze in the rounds as much as we can within a certain time limit. Because what you're saying to Krishna is, I'm simply trying to get rid of you so I can do something else. <laughs> and so Krishna is not going to really respond to that type of approach. We have to approach the holy name as we approach the deity in the same way. It is actually deity and transcendental sound. So the mood is in a mood of humility, as as the next verse in Shikshastika says, humility, tolerance, pridelessness, and respect for others is the is the characteristics of one who is actually chanting the holy names of the Lord. One has to practice these qualities and as we practice these qualities, then it becomes more natural to hear nicely the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. The chanting of the holy names of the Lord depend on a lot of other things also. You know, whether we're too tired, whether we are in a mood of serving, if we're not in a service mood, then it becomes very hard for us to actually get the mercy of the, the chanting of the holy name. So, but in this 11th offense, 
Shil Bhakti Vinota Kaur breaks it down into three categories of inattention. And he says, Vikshepa, Audakshina, and Jadya. Vikshepa means distraction. Uh, one is chanting, and then, you know, one is making plans on what to do later or some other thought process that one is dwelling upon. The thoughts may enter the mind, but as we mentioned, one should simply ignore them and continue with hearing the sound vibration very nicely. As we continue in that way, then the power of the holy name will, will diminish the effects of these mind, the mind interventions, and eventually it'll go away. So we should hear very nicely, chant clearly, don't be in a hurry, but chant with att attention. And uh, uh, so this fikshepa, distraction, has to be avoided. And Bhakti Vinota, of course, says one of the more effective ways to avoid fikshepa is to associate with and chant with devotees who are fixed in the process of chanting the holy names. In other words, by good association. Um, the next one is Aldakshina. Aldakshina means indifference, laziness. Okay, I got to chant my rounds. All right, 16 rounds. And so I'm just going, I'm kind of like chanting, but I'm really not really into it. I'm not trying to offer good attention, nor am I trying to uh, uh, um, really put my heart into the chanting of the holy names. And so it's just like indifferent. It's like if somebody brings up a subject matter, you're not interested in it. They may be talking, but you're not even hearing. <laughs> this indifference or uh, laziness, not laziness, but indifference, uh, you know, lackadaisicalness should be avoided. And the last one is Jadya. Jadya means sleep. Sometimes we find that one becomes sleepy when one starts to chant. So Bhakti Vinod Kaur gives a formula. He also says that one should uh, maybe walk around and that will help one to stay awake. But the problem when you walk, there's many more opportunities to get distracted by the environment. So one should be aware of that and uh, try to avoid that as much as possible. But he said he also said if this, this uh, feeling of sleepiness continues, then one should stop chanting, get some rest, and then chant when one is, and when one's mind is more, more fresh and alert. So this 11th offense is very important in helping us to actually get the mercy of the holy names of the Lord. Attentive chanting. So these are 10 offenses plus this 11th offense has to be very carefully. We have to understand it, avoid it, and then remain enthusiastic to chant. Chanting at the same time every day, sometimes it's not possible, but as much as you can, organize it in that way. On a personal level, I find that early, early japa is the best japa. When uh, japa has to be chanted later on in the day, when activities are going on, usually the day's activities take up one's attention. And then one is trying to squeeze in the mantra somewhere just to finish the rounds. Best if we can uh, arrange our schedule in such a way as to finish our rounds before we take our early breakfast. I find that's ideal. Um, it's not always possible for those who travel, but if you're in a one position, one place, and you don't have to travel so often, it's doable. And still you just have to arrange your schedule in, in such a way as you give yourself enough time to finish your rounds before you take your first meal. So these are some hints that we can use. But ultimately, chanting is a, uh, is a prayer of the heart. It's a calling of Krishna to come and uh, sit on my tongue, sit within my heart. Uh, we're actually hankering for the association 
of the Lord through the chanting of the holy name. And at the same time, we are glorifying the Lord by chanting his holy name. And as it's mentioned here, there's no greater activity than that. I'll, uh, I'll end with one particular statement by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur about the glories of the holy name. And he says, there is no vow like chanting the holy name, no knowledge superior to it, no meditation would come, come, which comes anywhere near it, and it gives the highest result. No penance is equal to it, and nothing is as potent or powerful as the holy name. Chanting is the greatest act of piety and the supreme refuge. Even the words of the Vedas do not possess sufficient power to describe its magnitude. Chanting is the highest path of liberation, peace, and eternal life. It is the pinnacle of devotion to heart's joyous proclivity and attraction and the best form of remembrance of the Supreme Lord. The Holy Name has appeared solely for the benefit of the living entities as their Lord and Master, their supreme worshipful object, and their spiritual guide and mentor. Whoever continuously chants Lord Krishna's holy name, even in his sleep, can easily realize that the name is a direct manifestation of Krishna himself, in spite of the influences of Kali Yuga. And that's from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Okay, so I'll uh, conclude here and see if we have any discussion or questions. Sure, Maya, would you like the questions to be sent on the chat or is, would you prefer them to speak it out so we could unmute the participants? Um, well, it's a personal preference. If they want to speak, that's fine with me. But if they want, they would rather write it on the chant, then that's okay. But I'll respond to oral questions. Sure, we have a hand up there. Um, Might be better to pipe. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. This is Gail. Oh, yeah. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, when you said that the holy name should not be compared to anything material, you know, we should just hear how the Acharyas refer to it. So um, I think we hear that the holy name is like, you know, rain, like in the first verse of the Shikshaskam, it's like a torrent of rain on, top, on, our, on the forest fire of our miseries you know so over there it is being compared to something material so can you reconcile that for me are you talking about the first verse in um shikshastakam in, no that's the first verse in the guru vastakam samsada dava naralita loka tarnaya karuna oh okay okay that refers to the to the mercy of the spiritual master he is like a rain cloud. Uh, uh. He's he's uh, watering us with the mercy to destroy our uh, burning fire in this material existence. Uh, the first okay. Shastika describes the different uh, benefits that the holy name gives, but it's, uh, the only analogous part of this first verse is that. It's like an unlimited ocean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. So in that way, why is that okay to call it like that? Well, is to, it, so, to use some to use a material example to show that there's no limit. One can never understand the limit of an ocean. Therefore, one can never understand the limit of the, the glories of the limit of the holy name of the Lord. Sometimes we use the analogy of the sky. The sky is unlimited, at least from the material comparative perspective that 
if you're looking for something that is vast and unmeasurable, immeasurable, you find the sky and the ocean are the analogies that are used. But that's just to give you a little indication that the holy, it's not a comparison. It's just showing that the, the holy name is unlimited. And there's no limit to it. The Anandambu Divardhanam, that it's an ocean of material happiness. Okay, so I guess the, the problem with other material comparisons is that the other material comparisons, they actually do kind of That's indirectly it. show yeah. a limitation. Yeah, you know? they're, they're, they're equating something. Yeah, like yeah. And yeah. in that way, limiting it. Yeah, um, but using these analogies are just show, just using the 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 analogy of unlimitedness. It's not an, it's not equating it with the whole thing. Right, right. Okay, Maharaj, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We have three more hands up, I can see. Uh, should should I call on them, or do you want to call them? Don't worry, we also have questions on the chat. So, uh, so um, well, you decide how, how it should go on. I, I'm just here. We received a first question like from Saket Mishraji. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my most respectful obeisance. Maharaj, how to ignore the thoughts that come to the mind while chanting your servant? Yeah, just don't pay attention to them. <laughs> if you're if you're a mother and in, in, in the house and you're trying to get your housework done and your little child is just pulling on your dress and you can't do it after a while, you just kind of like tell the child to go somewhere else and play. Or you, after a while, when the child doesn't want to do that, you just ignore it, and then it'll go away automatically. So if you if you give if you feed these thoughts, then they grow. You have to. And Prabhupada's point is, continue to hear the sound of the holy name. And you can also pray, and it's also mentioned that it's uh, that it's good to pray, that for uh, attention. Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur actually has made one statement. He said, unless you pray for attentive chanting, you cannot chant attentively. So he makes that point. So there is a preliminary, there are prayers that are mentioned that we can recite to help us to become more uh, attentive in the chanting. With one prayer by Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, it's a prayer that he go, he he's praying to Srila Haridas Thakur and to for attentive chanting. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Yes, yeah, important. The next question is coming from Nikunj Manjari Devi Mataji. I asked her to unmute. Yes, Mataji, please ask you. Am I audible? Yes, yeah. very nicely. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the for the wonderful session, Maharaj. My uh, quick question is, Maharaj, that um, on some days uh, when we are really struck with lots of services and work, uh, that time the there is a lot of pressure of chanting 16 rounds. That number itself creates uh, a huge pressure on the mind. And that, that connection which we feel during chanting, it is not there on those days. However, I have felt most of the time, like when I chant more rounds, like 17th onwards, it's always more connection because then there is no pressure. It's like we can go on chanting. So how to handle that number pressure on those days when we really don't have enough time? Well, then just chant nicely which, uh, within the range of the time limit that you have. Don't think in terms of numbers. Think in terms of quality and just chant nicely. Uh, that pressure is a is a mental conception that comes by way of feeling uh a food, a food glass glass. 
I'm sorry, I missed that last statement. Mm -hmm. So, so my, my response to your question is, uh, whatever time you have, chant nicely. Okay, Maharaj. So the next question is coming on the chat box. The question is sent by Supriya Ji. Supriya Ji says, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. What are symptoms of Nama Bhasa? When can we be sure we have moved from Nama Prat chanting to Nama Bhasa? And how long it takes to go for pure Nam? Uh, when one is starting to feel the happiness of chanting, when one is actually becoming happy, that is the symptom of Nama, Nama Bhas. It's like a glimmer of the pure rays of the holy name are coming through our, into our consciousness now. And we're feeling peaceful, we're feeling happy. In other words, we're, we're actually moving away from the offenses. And the next question is coming from Hari Bhakti Prabhuji. I asked him to unmute, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, thanks for giving your time. Uh, Maharaj, like uh, for many years, I am chanting Mahamantra and I, am, I chant uh, Rama. And recently, one of my uh, mentors said, it's not Rama, it's Ram. So it's very, after so many years, I'm really confused. So, uh, uh, of course, it is a matter of love, but uh, how it should, it should be Rama or Ram. It's a very basic question. Thank you. We just read the mantra. It says Rama. I chant Rama. I used to, when I first started chanting, I was chanting Ram because it seems like it's easier. But then after a while, I heard one devotee was telling me that Srila Prabhupada was instructing one, one of his disciples that when you chant, you have to chant Rama because the 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 the, the uh, the, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra contains 32 syllables. And you're dropping four of the syllables off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, sometimes we even see Srila Prabhupada chants Ram. Yeah. But still, we follow his instructions, chant Rama. So I'm, I'm working on that more and more now. And when I chant Rama, I chant much more attentively. So whoever told you that, tell me he's in Maya. <laughs> that's that's really not a, a good instruction at all. It's completely off. Thank you very much. The next question is coming from Scarlet Blue Mataji. Hare Please Krishna. ask your question. Thank you very, very much for this wonderful, wonderful information. Uh, you mentioned about the chanting in the morning is very, very important. It's good. And I'm doing, I'm trying to really, really, really make it to, to do it in the morning. But sometimes I divide it like uh, I do it four times in the morning and four with the to uh, on, uh, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and four about four half past four is it wrong to do that is it offense to do this way should I do only at once 16 round in the at one round and this is, with it. this is a qualitative question the thing is the instruction is to chant 16 rounds a day so there's no, no, there's no other rules after that. But then if you understand the process and how it works and Srila Prabhupada's instructions, he encourages this to chant as early as possible. But that doesn't mean if you, it's not a, a, a rule, it's a, it's a way to inspire us in quality chanting, that's all. So if you chant later on in the day and that works for you and that's uh, because of your, your daily schedule, that's fine. Thank you very much. And the next question is coming uh, from Akshi Goyal. Uh, she said, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisance. When a person first starts chanting, 
it is considered as offensive as it is contaminated by various material thoughts the stage of nama bhas is nama aparat how to control this what is the last part of the question the uh, uh, she said when a person first starts chanting it is considered as offensive as it yeah. is contaminated by various material thoughts the well, stage of nama bhas is nama aparat how yeah, to control not, this it's not a contamination it's just a distraction that's all so uh practice <laughs> i mean i would suggest in a very emphasized way that you read uh, the uh, book by uh, his holiness sachi nandana swami called the living name it gives many many insightful instructions on how to approach the holy name okay Maharaj. and the next question is uh, next and i think last question is coming from sri devi mataji she is there she raised her hand i asked her to unmute ask your question sri devi mataji uh hari krishna thank you my humble obeisance is dear guru maharaj all glories to prabhupad guru maharaj before we begin chanting ideally we must uh, chant the Mangalarti prayers, uh, prayers to the Guru, prayers to Lord Nashigadev Tulsi. But what if we don't have time? How much we should give uh, ourselves to prepare for chanting? As much as you can, but Srila Prabhupada said we, we must chant Jaiti Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhaktivinoda that we be, one cannot approach uh, that one should chant the punch mantra before chanting the Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So, all right, Prabhuji and Mataji, welcome back once again. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your priceless time. We are so happy that you are here in Ujjain, and we are also blessed that you allow us to celebrate your Vyas Puja Mahotsav before the time, like 24. Uh, every Ujjain devotees are very excited. Maharaj's original Vyas Puja is on 29th, next to the, uh, but on the next day of Radha Ashtami, he allows us to celebrate his Vyas Puja Mahotsav in Ujjain. So from Iskon Kirtan Ministry, we like to show our gratitude for your priceless time, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Please bless us so we will become a pure devotee like a, a develop 1% of your quality, so our life is fulfilled. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Rupeshwar Prabhu. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Sure. So go on the chat box and glorify Maharaj. His only name is Chandra Mali Swami, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Saket Mishra Ji says Jai. Tom Kanchan Pillai says Jai. Nikunja Ji says Jai. Snehal Ji says Jai. Calvin says Jai.